Hi guys, I'm Elefteria and I'm a herbalism instructor. In this video, we'll talk about the 10 most important medicinal herbs that were used by the native tribes of the Southwest. Before I proceed, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I came in contact with Native American herbalism during my trip to Arizona in the summer of 2018 and the photos you will see were taken by me. So let's go! The first herb we'll talk about is yucca elata, known as soap tree yucca. Native Americans used the fiber of the soap tree yucca's leaves to make so many objects like sandals, belts, cloth, baskets, cords and mats. They also ate the flowers. Inside the trunk and roots of the plant is a soapy substance high in saponins. This substance was commonly used as soap and shampoo, which was used to treat dandruff and hair loss. At least one tribe, the Zuni, used the soap made from yucca sap, especially to wash newborn babies. The Apaches also used yucca leaf fibers to make dental floss and rope. The second herb is Prosopis velutina, known as forest floor or velvet mesquite. Sore throats were treated with a hot tea made from a blend of the clear sap plus the inner red bark. Stomach aches were treated with a tea made from the fresh leaves. Toothache was treated by chewing the soft inner bark of the root. The bark was also used for baskets and fabrics. Mesquite pods are still an important source of food for humans as well as native wildlife. Native Americans also used Ephedra viridis, known as Mormon tea. The plant was used medicinally by the Native Americans to treat various afflictions, including sexually transmitted diseases. It contains the alkaloid ephedrine and is valuable in the treatment of asthma. Later, the Mormons used it instead of coffee. You can actually learn more about herbs in my books on Amazon. You can find me as Eleftheria Manzori. Our fourth plant is Akakia Gregi, known as Scratching Bush. The young, unripe beans of the tree were gathered and eaten by the desert tribes of the southwest. The Cahuilla also ground the dried beans for mush and cakes, while the Havasupai ground them to make flour for bread. The buds and blossoms were dried to make perfume sachets by the women. The plant is also used in basketry and bows. The ripe seed is toxic. Then we have Celtis Lavigata, with the amazing common name Imperial Feast or Sugarberry. The fruit can be eaten raw or cooked. The flesh is thin, dry and sweetish, hence the name Sugarberry. A decoction of the bark has been used in the treatment of sore throats. Juniperus monosperma was called Nomagati by the Hopi. The Navajo ate the ripe cones in the fall or winter and made a dye from the bark and cones. Among the Zuni people, a poultice of the chewed root was applied to increase the strength of newborns and infants. An infusion of the leaves was also taken for muscle aches and to prevent conception. The infusion of the leaves was also taken postpartum to prevent uterine cramps and stop vaginal bleeding. A gum from the plant has been used as a temporary filling in decayed tooth and also as a chewing gum. Broom snakeweed is the plant Gutierrezia sarothre. The Comanche bound the stems together to make brooms. The Blackfoot used the roots in a herbal steam as a treatment for respiratory ailments. A decoction of the plant was used by the Lakota to treat colds, coughs and dizziness. The Navajo rubbed the ashes of the plants on their bodies to treat headaches and dizziness and also applied the chewed plant to wounds, snake bites and areas swollen by insect bites and stings. Next one is a favorite of mine, that's agave pari, known as the cultivated heart. The heart of the plant is very rich in saccharine matter and can be eaten baked. It is sweet and nutritious. The seed is ground into a flour and used as a thickener in soups or used with cereal flours when making bread. The young flower stalk can be eaten raw or cooked. The sap from the cut flower and stems is used as a syrup. Forestiera pubensens produces a nutritious, edible fruit. Plants grown in the wild are used as indicators of underground water. It also produces a reliable digging stick. And, last but not least, Native Americans used Arctostaphylos, known as manzanita. 
The leaves are used for urinary tract infections and constitute an important medicinal herb worldwide. The tree's berries can be turned into a cider. In Native American cultures, this cider is then used to treat stomach ailments and promote appetite. The berries have also been used to treat bronchitis and kidney problems. Thank you for watching my video. Check out my Instagram at Flow Athens and my website jointheflow.net. If you want to see more of my Arizona trip, leave a comment and I'll post amazing materials from Sunset Crater, Gupaki, Pueblo and more. Be always well and have fun. Bye.